Hello, we're here for the one year Bible study on this terrific Tuesday. And I'm just bubbling over as always. I know I keep telling y'all, it just, it's so good and it is so good. We're reading about today, it's uh, Goliath. And I don't, I don't know why, I just, but I'm grateful that it just seems like God just keeps downloading stuff inside of me as I read this. In fact, this time it was just very relevant for once again situations that's going on in my life right now and it's just i just love how that happens you know we're doing a one-year bible study and so in 1985 or 86 i think is the copyright of this prior to that there's a group of men and women that got together and worked on this reading plan and said, okay, we're gonna take this snippet of the Old Testament, this snippet of the New Testament, a Psalms and a Proverbs, and we're gonna put it together into this 365 day format, thus the one year Bible. And when you finish reading this, you've read the whole Bible from front cover to, co to back cover. I, I just still can't get over how on May the 15th, 2018, today's reading, applied to Elizabeth Inman on May 15th, 2018. And I tell you that it's not about me, it's it's for the encouragement that that's what'll happen for you. I, I, want, I want you guys to get better at three things. I want you to be better at praying. I believe that there's people that's hearing my voice that hasn't prayed in a long, long, long time for various reasons. And today, today, I want you to bow your head and I want you to pray. And, and you know what? I don't even care if you bow your head or not. I don't always pray with my head bowed. I pray with my eyes open many times. I love out here in the garden um, that God's created for us. I love to pray out loud as I'm looking at the beautiful stars and the sky and the sun and the moon and the trees and the birds. Uh, but pray. And then number two, listen. Be still. Find you a quiet place. Um, it can be in your closet. I literally... Um, had a precious lady that I love a lot that would go into her walk-in closet, shut the door, and she would sit on the floor, and that was her prayer closet. That is where she heard from God the clearest. Uh, so listen, pray, listen, and then start a reading plan. So by reading the Word, um, you get to know Him. Uh, you get to have a more intimate relationship with Him. This is all about relationship with our Heavenly Father. So, you know, think of it <clears throat> as a good friend or think of it as a father or a mother or somebody that lo you love really, really deeply and things are happening in your life and they're your safe person. They're who you can tell all your troubles to. You can tell all your triumphs. You can tell all of your battles. You can uh, vent to them. You can work through things uh, with them. <clears throat> and that's what I'm saying is happening with me with these readings may 15th 2018 issues things going on in my life some of them are issues some of them are um praise reports some of them are just day-to-day -day decisions that have to be made and i'm getting answers and i'm getting encouragement almost daily now almost daily i mean when i first started it I would go a long time and I'd read several pages that I, I may not get anything out of it. But I'm, I'm, I'm about 15 years into this and I'm, oh my goodness, I'm just, and I know I'm bubbling over because I can't help it. But here it is, it's the, it's the story of, of David and Goliath. <clears throat> and David's just a boy. They all make fun of him. His brothers make fun of him. Uh, Saul, the king, makes fun of him and says, who are you to think you can kill this giant? And Goliath is this giant and he's thundering and he's full of himself and he doesn't believe there's anybody that can uh, take him on. And, and in, in, we're reading in 1 Samuel 17 uh, and 18, and in verse nine, it says, if he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, <clears throat> you will be our slaves. And, and this, is what, this is what struck me. And I know, I know it's not unique. I, I don't know that I have any unique ideas. Um, we're one spirit with our Father. So probably the revelations I'm getting are revelations that have been handed down through the ages, through this written word, through the spoken word of God. But I've heard lots of lots and lots of sermons about how the Goliath in your life can be anything. 
Um, it can be a financial struggle. It can be an addiction. It can be um, a relationship issue. It can be that your car won't start today. Um, it can be that you don't know how to get the moles out of your front yard that's tearing up your, I mean, it can be a Goliath in your life can be anything. <clears throat> but, but today I just, I just heard some different things. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. You know what? If we're fighting an addiction, it could be an addiction to our cell phones. It, it could be that I can't put this thing down. That becomes our Goliath. It can be an addiction to cigarettes. It can be an addiction to heroin or meth. It can be an addiction to people pleasing. It can be an addiction to pornography. It can be an addiction to, um, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. You fill in the blank. I have them. I have things in my life that makes me feel good that I struggle with. I, I'll, I'll just give you an example, coffee. I, there's been about four different times in my life that I believe that God has told me to stop drinking coffee. <clears throat> and I struggle with that because I only drink a couple of cups a day at most. Um, maybe since we've moved into this house, I, I drink a little bit more, our office is here. But there's never been an ongoing period of time in my life that I've ever drank more than two cups of coffee. Most of the time, and most of my adult life, I started drinking coffee at 26 years old. It's one cup. And boy, God tells me to not drink, and it's like, well, what does one cup hurt? And why would he tell me to quit drinking one cup of coffee? And 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 I'm, I'm not kidding. The very first time I heard him tell me to stop drinking coffee, it was a three-year battle. It was a three-year, if he kills me, then we will be your slaves. And you know what? That coffee killed me. That coffee, I was a slave to it because I just, I justified it. It was, oh, one cup can't hurt anything. Even two cups. It would be different if I was drinking a whole pot of coffee. And I don't care what your fill in the blank is. We all are guilty of doing that. And when I read this, I, I, I am reminded that we become a slave to those Goliaths. When we don't obey our Heavenly Father, we become a slave. Um, it, debt. Debt. The Bible tells us, oh no man. Uh, you will lend to many and borrow from none, and yet we go into debt, and then we're a slave to debt. Um, so anyway, I, you know, if he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. <clears throat> and so David is just sent in by his father, Jesse, to go check on the three brothers that are in the army, not knowing what's going on with Goliath. Um but Jesse sent him, sent him on in, and, and then here's another one that hit me so different. Um, so David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gifts of Jesse, his dad, had directed him. He left his sheep with another shepherd, and all of a sudden I'm reminded David was a shepherd, so was Moses. Hmm. Hmm. Moses was a shepherd, David was a shepherd. And who, who calls himself the good shepherd? That's Jesus, the good shepherd. Mm. Then all of a sudden, so David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out. He, you know what? He, he took his job so serious that he wasn't about to leave those sheep. Our job is to take care of the sheep. Every one of us are a shepherd. Every one of us has been entrusted with something or someone or someones that God has given to us and has entrusted us just as, as the sheep was for David. And he wouldn't even leave them without giving them over to another shepherd. Mm. And it just started building from there. So <clears throat> he, he, he arrives at the camp and just as the Israelites was leaving for the battlefield and then, then um, David heard the shouts from uh, uh, Goliath. They, he shouted his usual taunt to the army of Israel. And as soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. 
have you seen the giant? Have you seen the giant? The men ask. He, he comes out each day to defy the uh, to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He'll give that man one of his daughters for a wife, and the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. Now that's a pretty big thing back then, to be given one of the king's uh, daughters um, uh, for for uh, killing Goliath. So then David asked the soldier standing nearby, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he's allowed to defy the armies of the living God? And then these men gave David the same reply. Yes, that is the reward for killing him. But then get this. But when David's oldest brother Eliab heard David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway? He demanded what about those few sheep now get the sarcasm I'd never got the sarcasm in this before what about those few sheep um, that you're supposed to be taken care of and then this this is the, the phrase that gets me I it's his brothers this is his brother Eliab talking to David I know of your pride and deceit and then all of a sudden it hit me Joseph was accused of pride when he had his dreams. David, uh, uh, Moses was accused of pride when he killed um, the Egyptian. And then here is David being accused of pride. And I know for myself, I told you this talk to me. The struggle that I've had to even do these videos, not so much recently, however, I'm still getting a message from the Lord on it. What is it that God's asked you to do? What is it that he's called you to do? And how many of you are saying, oh, not me. I mean, that's what I do. No, let me lose 60 pounds before I get on video. Let me get my hair just right. Let me make sure my makeup's just right. Let me, are you sure, Lord, you want it to be me? I mean, wow, there's things in my past that, are you sure? I mean, do you get what I'm saying? And then God told me that that was a false humility. It's ungodly humbleness. And then it all comes back to pride. So I've struggled with that. And yet here we have three men that was accused of pride. We've had Moses accused of being prideful. We have Joseph that was accused of being prideful. Now we have David. Those are just the ones I can think of. This I know. <laughs> if I was doing Bible study, see this, this is the difference in Bible study versus our morning reading. If I was doing Bible study, I would dig into that. And I probably am being told that I should dig into that, quite frankly. Bible study in the morning is what God speaks to me spontaneously as I'm reading his word. And this is what he told me is that if we aren't being seen by certain folks as being prideful, then we don't have enough confidence in ourselves to do what he's called us to do. Ooh. Wow. There, are, there will be those who will see you as being prideful in what you're doing when all it is is the confidence that you're obeying God obedience will be mistook for confidence if we don't have confidence in who we are in Christ and who he is in us we can't be used by the kingdom of God we can't be used by God in the kingdom of God man I'll tell you and then I wrote in the margin uh, take care of God Elizabeth take care of God's sheep if you're being led by the Spirit <clears throat> with only I can't even read my own writing I, I love that <laughs> Elizabeth take care of God's sheep if you're being led by the spirit with the only something of God people will with, yeah with only the something of God people will accuse you of pride oh the confidence okay oh my goodness I'm sorry Oh well. <laughs> Elizabeth, take care of God's sheep. If you are only being led by the Spirit, um, if you, if, oh. Elizabeth, take care of God's sheep. If you are being led by the Spirit with the confidence of God, people will accuse you of pride. 
and then they'll look at this video and they'll laugh because it only took me about four times to get that point out. But anyway, uh, wow. And I could go so deep into that. I, I could, but I won't. I'm, I'm, I'm just believing that seeds are planted um, and it'll be watered. But it goes down here in verse 34, but David persisted. Well, okay, so that's his, that's his brothers making fun of him, telling him he's being prideful. And then it goes on, um, says, I know about your pride and deceit. And then he uh, went over to some others and um, he ta actually talked to Saul this time, to King Saul this time, and says, I'll go fight him. And Saul says, don't be ridiculous. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. And he's been a man, and been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats he said when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth oh, if the animal turns on me I catch it by the jaw and I club it to death a little bit of resistance comes and we turn tail and we run it just gets a little bit hard. Oh, I thought this was gonna be easy. God called me to do videos and I thought it was gonna be so easy to do the videos. Oh, God called me to take care of the sheep and I didn't know I was gonna to have to clean up the poo after the sheep. Oh, God called me to, and you know what? My bank account doesn't say I can do that right now. The least little bit of resistance comes and we turn tail and we run. Okay, now let's let's think about this. The shepherds. He he handed his sheep off to another shepherd. The other shepherds. How do the other shepherds respond when a bear and a lion come? They turn tail and they run. They they try to they'll, they'll they will sacrifice the one sheep to save the others instead of if the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and I club it to death. I'm telling you, God wants us to have a different attitude about resistance. So my bank account's not where it needs to be. I'm going to take it by the jaw and I'm going to club it to death. Man. How, okay, by a raise of hands, how many of y'all, that's how you respond to the resistance? Not I. So here on the margin, I wrote, when opposition comes, rise up in the spirit, catch it by the jaw, and club it to death. Lord, I ask that you help me remember these words when opposition comes. When it starts getting hard, instead of cowering down and saying, oh man, it's hard. It's hard. I didn't know it was going to be so hard. I didn't know I was gonna sweat when I had to do this. I didn't know I was gonna have people tell me I'm prideful when I did this. I didn't know I was gonna have others that won't even talk to me because I'm doing this. Instead, rise up and we grab it by the jaw and we club it to the, we have that authority. We have authority over any opposition that attempts to come up at us, but that's not our natural instinct. And quite frankly, off and on for the last week, that's not what Elizabeth Inman has done. But when I read this, I rose up in the spirit and said, let me have them. I'm going to grab them by the jaw and I'm going to club them. Meaning the opposition. <sighs> wow. Then Saul gave, Dave, gave David his own armor. Um, and I, uh, in, the, in the margin, this is what I wrote. 2018 for Elizabeth. To conquer, put on the armor of God. But this is interesting what David did. David is young. How many of y'all have said, well, I'm not old enough. I can't do that. I haven't been reading my Bible enough. I've only been saved for just a few years. I've only known that I'm supposed to be doing something for God just a short period of time. So then Saul gave, it, Saul gave David his own armor. And we know what the armor of God is. And so he put it on, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword, ooh, we know what the sword is, over it and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things. 
And then he says, I can't go in there with these. I'm not used to them. God will call you into things that you aren't prayed up enough to do, that you aren't studied up enough to do. He wants you to understand that you trust him, not your prayer life, not the word, not the written word. This isn't where our trust is. Our trust is in the spirit of the living God living on the inside of us, and that is who helped David. Young David, who was just a boy, kill the biggest giant that the entire army of Israelites had ever seen, and they were all afraid of him, including the king. Including the king. Was he too young? Probably. Was he not equipped enough? Probably. Did he not have enough armor on? Probably. But the Spirit of God overtook him, and he killed and he conquered that giant. There is no excuse for us not to conquer the giants in our life. There is no excuse for us to sit around feeling sorry for ourselves. Oh, well, if you just knew my story. If you just knew what had happened to me. If you just knew. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Today the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you. This is David talking to Goliath. So the same man who rose up when those animals turned on him, grabbed him by the jaw and clubbed him to death, is now spewing back things right at Goliath as Goliath, Goliath was telling uh, him about how pitiful he was and how he wasn't scared of him. This is David speaking to the, to the giant. Today the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you, cut off your head. And then I will give the dead body of your men to the birds and wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. See, everything we do that we're called to do and out of obedience we do is designed to bring God glory. It's designed to bring him, not us. It's not about us. David doesn't, didn't make it about him. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. He had no sword <laughs> and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. And there was a lot more stuff about the reason why he was knocked down with the slingshot and the stone. And then subsequently he had to go kill him and cut off his head. But I, I don't have time to go into that. So, um, and then, and then I, but I have to mention this. We start uh, chapter 18, verse one. And this is when Jonathan and David meet. I, I, I am so changed and moved by the story of David. As I am Joseph and Moses and Ruth and Esther. And the stories in the Bible touches us so deeply. It's why it's so important to, to read them. But after David had finished talking with Saul, he met Jonathan, the king's son. There was an immediate bond between them. For Jonathan loved David. And Jonathan made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. That's a picture of Christ there. About how much he loves us. He loves uh, God loved his son uh, in the same manner in which he loved him. And a pact was made between the two of them. And we'll pick this up tomorrow. Um, it, it just keeps getting better as far as I'm concerned. I, I just want to point out a couple of things and then I'll stop. I've gone way long today. Uh, John chapter 8, verses 21 through 30, and I'm going to pick up in verse 26. And this is Jesus talking. They're asking who he is. They're demanding to know who he is. And um, in fact, I'll just start in verse 25. I don't want to leave any out. Who are you? They demanded. Jesus replied, the one I've always claimed to be. I have much to say about you and much to condemn, but I won't. <laughs> but I won't. Boy, Jesus' example of not saying the things that was on his mind is so powerful. For I say only what I have heard from the one who sent me. Do you know how many times just in, in John we've heard that? I say what my father says. I only do what my father says do over and over again and here it is again for I only for I say only what I've heard from the one who sent me and he is completely truthful but they still didn't understand so Jesus said 
when you have lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, then you will understand that I am He. I do nothing on my own, but say only what the Father taught me. See, that's my prayer. I want to get there. He's given me this gift of communication, and I don't always use it for good. I speak when I'm not supposed to be speaking. I say things when I'm supposed to be still. But I'm, I'm, I'm being changed. Every single time I read this, I'm being changed. For I always do what pleases Him. Oh, Lord, I only want to do what pleases you. Hmm. Thank you for bearing with me today as I got a little windy. So um, these are powerful scriptures, and I enjoy sharing them with you. So thanks for tuning in with me.